Well, it seems Audacity's team has responded to the backlash from the telemetry fiasco that happened last week. Uh, if you don't know what happened, there's going to be a link up here. But to get you up to speed real fast, one of Audacity's developers uh, issued a pull request which would integrate some uh, opt-in telemetry collection into the software. While there were definitely people who were up in arms about the idea of any free and open source software project collecting any amount of telemetry in any circumstance, uh, most people were more concerned about the fact that, you know, Google and Yandex were going to be the services that were actually receiving the telemetry being collected. I mean, I was definitely concerned about that, but at the same time kind of understood, you know, their perspective on the matter, not necessarily agreeing with it. Anyway, flash forward to Thursday of last week where Audacity's project lead Tantacruel actually posted to Audacity's GitHub discussion board. In it, he spoke uh, about the, the concerns that the community had. Uh, he, he talked talked about their thought process on the matter, uh, what actions they were actually proposing to take uh, to remedy the situation, and address a few other things as well. Uh, first, Tantacruel says, quote, we are dropping the telemetry features proposed in pull request number 835. Regarding features that require networking, we would like to include error reporting and the ability for Audacity to check for updates. Details below. And we will self-host all collected data from error reporting and checks for updates, removing any need for Google or Yandex analytics. Boom. Clear. Concise. Transparent. And self-hosted. <laughs> That's like the biggest thing. That's awesome to me. He went on to say, quote, the creation and subsequent discovery of pull request 835 was a bad communication or, co or coordinating blunder uh, that caught us completely by surprise. We're very sorry for causing so much alarm. Our intention was to make an initial announcement about our plans to include telemetry on the Audacity forums, similar to how we discussed the topic for MuseScore in 2019. In that instance, I think the fact that we introduced the issue openly resulted in a lot less suspicion. And yeah, I mean, I really think that the community's uh, overly negative reaction to this was because the, the pull request had been issued without starting the dialogue with the Audacity community. Um, they hadn't mentioned anything to the community. And when some people found that pull request, they went and made headlines about it. They shared it on Reddit. They, you know, and big, uh, big media outlets picked up on the story and ran with it. And, you know, because the pull request was discovered without them talking to the community first, it could have appeared underhanded to some people. And I get that. Tantacruel continued on saying, quote, it is important to stress that we have absolutely no interest in harvesting or selling personal data and Audacity will always be free and open source. The response to pull request 835 has brought about a realization at Muse uh, that the convenience of using Yandex and Google is at odds with the public perception of trustworthiness, so we will be self-hosting instead. Which actually was the point I was trying to make. Uh, Muse is used to using convenient and free tools like Yandex and Google. It's fundamentally at odds with the the with the values of open source. Um, so it's good that uh, Tantacruel and the backlash here was able to convince Muse that using these things for free projects is just not a, a good idea. The next item is telemetry. I believe our communication mistake contributed to a lot of misunderstanding about our intentions here. Telemetry is a practical tool that tells us a lot about how an app is performing or underperforming. Uh, is this new feature being used a lot? Is this button being discovered, etc.? We assume that making it opt-in would allay privacy concerns, but since this isn't the case, we are dropping it. Look, a lot of people are going to see that as a victory, but I am less enthused. While the Audacity project dropping Google and Yandex here certainly is a good thing, they aren't just dropping Google and Yandex. They are entirely foregoing opt-in metrics collection that would have given them crucial insight into how Audacity is being used, how they might improve the Audacity user experience, and how the interface can be improved. Saddest of all, they opted out of providing a roadmap to other open source projects that would be able to follow in their footsteps and ethically collect opt-in optional metrics data about user experience, which could improve more open source software exponentially. And personally, I think that's a shame. There is a balance to be struck between, you know, anonymous uh, telemetry being collected uh, with the consent of the user and, you know, user privacy. 
there is that balance to be struck. I think that Audacity could have done that if they had, you know, not opted to use Google and Yandex in the first place and had opened the dialogue uh, with the community before this pull request was ever issued. Now, they are still including uh, automatic error reporting, and that is a good thing to see. Uh, specifically, they are looking for uh, SQL errors, application crashes, and non-fatal exceptions. That's a good thing, in my opinion. Whenever reportable errors happen, a dialog box will pop up asking the user to send a report or not. They'll be presented with all of the data that will be submitted, uh, and uh, the buttons to submit or not submit will be equally prominent, according to this post. And all of the data submitted to the uh, automatic crash reporting will be self-hosted in a, a Sentry database by the Audacity team. Naturally, uh, error reports going uh, being sent over the internet is going to expose IP addresses to the team's server. Uh, but I think far too many people get their panties in a twist when it comes to IP addresses. Sure, an IP address can give a rough geographic location uh, for a user. But IP addresses really shouldn't be considered uh, personally identifiable information. It's so easy to manipulate what your IP address is, and, and chances are most of the devices on your home network share the same public IP address between them. This is not a huge deal. Uh, people are making this out to be a much bigger deal than it should be. But whatever, they're going to be doing uh, uh, update checking as well. When the program starts, Audacity will check whether a new version of the program is available for download, and if it sees a new version, the user will be shown a dialog to notify them. There will be an option to disable automatic checking, and this decision can be uh, changed in preferences at any time. Update checking reveals three things, the IP address, the OS version, and the Audacity version. We will uh, use a self-hosted geolocation database to determine the country the IP address is located in and nothing more. The raw IP address will not be stored or logged, but we will store and log a non-reversible hash of the IP address to improve the accuracy of da uh, daily statistics. The server is located within the EU to comply with the GDPR, and no information will be sent to any third parties unless required by law. And that's fine with me, uh, especially because they're being upfront about it, right? That's really uh, the problem that most people had, uh, even if they don't really know that. Uh, the problem was that they weren't uh, completely upfront, and and probably not in an underhanded way, just in a, a you know. We have a pull request. We're just going to push the pull request. We're not going to wait for a community post or anything. Just miscommunication. I really, I really think that this is just a miscommunication error. Finally, Tantacryl said that all of this networking stuff is going to be entirely optional and will be off by default when building this from source. Quote, the behavior described above for error reporting and update checking would only apply to official release versions of Audacity available from our website or GitHub page. In other builds, the error reporting and update checking code will be excluded by default via CMake options. Which had also been, you know, the case with the with the pull request that uh, caused this whole kerfuffle in the first place. There were a few questions raised in the previous pull request that weren't answered here, but honestly, I feel like this is a great uh, response. I think that they are doing a good job, and I feel like this covers most of the bases uh, pretty thoroughly. I hope at some point in the future, Audacity can uh, do more telemetry, um, you know, do it in an ethical way that respects user privacy uh, and, and is self-hosted by their team. And I want to apologize because I did make a mistake in my video about Tantacruel. I, I said that he had nearly a million subscribers when I meant to say he had nearly a quarter of a million subscribers. Uh, that was a mistake on my part. But anyway, uh, I would like to know what you guys think about this because I think this post on the GitHub discussion board, uh, it was exactly what was needed. Um, and you know, and I, I, I am the kind of person who's not going to jump to conclusions when it comes to an open source project like uh, Audacity. I don't think that they ever intended to collect user metrics or even sneak this into Audacity without telling anyone. I think it was just a miscommunication uh, by their team and the pull request happened and people caught it before they could talk to their community about what they were wanting to do. Uh, 
I would love to know what you think about this though. Uh, let me know down in the comments. I really appreciate hearing from you guys. Right now, there is actually a video that's exclusive to uh, YouTube members and patrons. If you're already a YouTube member, you can check out the community tab here on YouTube. If you're a patron, check out your Patreon feed. You'll see the video there. Um, yeah, we're talking about the future of this channel uh, and uh, it's pretty interesting. I, I hope you guys uh, take a look at it. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. I wanna give a special shout out to Sheldon Halcom, one of my top tier Singularity members over on Patreon. Uh, if it wasn't for people like Sheldon and the other folks on Patreon or the YouTube members who support this show, I would not have been able to switch the format up and be able to bring you three videos a week. So I wanted to say thank you so much to these guys because they make what I do here possible. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help support the show, make a monthly pledge on Patreon or, you know, make a pledge here on YouTube. Uh, it's all very much appreciated. I think that's going to do it for this video, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.